Dartmouth College is always a very popular choice with my students and families. My name is Craig Meister, known as the College Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about how you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And because Dartmouth is such a popular choice, I felt inspired today to discuss Dartmouth's 2023-2024 admission cycle supplemental essay prompts, which have been released as of this filming, the first Ivy League school to actually release its supplemental essay prompts for the 2023-2024 admission cycle. Remember, these are for the students, the first-year students, who are hoping to ultimately become members of Dartmouth's class of 2028. Let's take a deep dive into these prompts right now. Prompt number one is a required prompt, meaning you must respond to it, but you only have 100 words or fewer with which to work. It's this prompt. Dartmouth celebrates the ways in which its profound sense of place informs its profound sense of purpose. As you seek admission to Dartmouth's class of 2028, what aspects of the college's academic program, community, and or campus environment attract your interest? In short, why Dartmouth? So I discussed this prompt last year because this is one of the prompts that are actually used again. It's a recycled prompt. It was on the application last year as well. And I encourage you to, below this video, find the link to my previous video from last admission cycle that was entitled How to Get into Dartmouth where we discuss this prompt in some greater depth. I won't discuss it as much today, but suffice it to say, you really do want very much to give specifics. Do not be generic. Do not be vanilla, be Rocky Road. Uh, so what do I mean by this? I mean that you are going to have to name specific programs or professors or very specific elements of the campus itself or the community itself that could not in any way apply if you were writing a 100-word essay to Amherst or to Williams or to Bates or Bowdoin or, or Princeton or, or, or Brown or any of them. You need to be able to write here 100 words that are a love letter to Dartmouth. Uh, if you can't do that, you have not gotten specific enough and maybe it's not the right fit for you. Uh, so do not just talk in very generic, fluffy language that could be recyclable, recyclable for other schools on your list. Instead, make sure that by the end of the 100 words that are on your final draft of this particular essay, that the readers over at Dartmouth get the sense that you were made for Dartmouth and Dartmouth was made for you. And of course, grounding that, particularly in its sense of place is not a bad idea, but ultimately, if you don't have too much to say about Hanover or about New Hampshire in particular, or it's you know general isolation relative to some other Ivy Leagues, uh, Ivy League schools, um, don't get fixated on the sense of place as much as the community, the program, the the campus elements that are most attracting you. Because again, in in short, the question is why Dartmouth but you must get specific with your response and you only have a hundred words to do it in. So I wish you the very best of luck. How you should structure this very short essay is a one sentence intro, a several sentence body and a one sentence conclusion. There should be no time or space for repetition. Every word has to punch above its weight and serve a purpose. Otherwise through the drafting process, you should be cutting wasted words out. The next required response, you actually have two choices of essays to uh, prompts to respond to. So you have a 250 word essay next, but you can write that essay in response to either of the following two prompts titled A and B. One of these, B, Be Yourself, Oscar Wilde advised, everyone else is taken, introduce yourself. That was on the application during the 2022-2023 admission cycle, and it is again this year in the 2023-2024 admission cycle. But A is new, and this is A, and this reminds me of an old Tufts prompt. There is a Quaker saying, let your life speak. Describe the environment in which you were raised and the impact it has had on the person you are today. Again, that's a new prompt for this year, and you can either respond to that prompt or the Be Yourself Oscar Wilde advised, everyone else is taken, introduce yourself prompt. So 
honestly, it's sort of like six and one half dozen of the other. Ultimately, your job here is to shed light on an aspect of yourself, your humanity, your individuality uh, that they have not heard anything about or have not yet heard enough about in the other elements of your application. Of course, your application includes letters of recommendation, your uh, application includes a resume, your application includes your Common App essay. So don't repeat yourself, never repeat yourself, in fact, when you're applying to an Ivy League school, uh, but instead shed new light on a facet of yourself that would be very interesting or attractive to the admissions committee uh, and fascinating for them to learn about. Uh, the addition of the new option of the Quaker prompt is paying homage to the fact that affirmative action is now unlawful in the United States. And so Dartmouth wants to be explicit that they want to respect and learn about the environment in which you were raised and the impact it has had on the person you have become today if you want to share that. But honestly, the be yourself, everyone else has taken, introduce yourself prompt can allow you to arrive at the exact same type of essay which would be shedding light again on an element of your background, your yourself, um, how you were raised or the environment that you found yourself in before applying to Dartmouth that has helped formed or informed who you are as a person. Uh, so again, I would definitely structure this in a very traditional way, a one or two sentence introduction with a thesis, a body paragraph that proves the thesis, uh, where you're giving specific details of who you are, what makes you unique, whether that's framed more along the lines of the environment in which you were raised or just anything based off the Oscar Wilde option. Uh, and then a conclusion sentence or two that does not just restate the thesis and does not repeat anything else previously written, but rather says something new and intriguing and maybe even forward-looking ideally uh, that will give the Dartmouth Admissions Committee insight into how you see yourself growing as a student or as a person building upon the person you've introduced in, let's say, the first 220 words or so of this, this essay, 225, maybe even 230 words of this essay. You have basically a sentence or two to conclude, say something new that would leave them wanting more. And then finally, the third required short essay that you must produce in the 2023-2024 admission cycle for Dartmouth uh, is also one that cannot be longer than 250 words. So this one, though, gives you one, two, three, four, five, is it six? One, yes, yeah, six different options from which to choose. Again, Dartmouth has introduced this year three new options for this one. And again, I think this is mainly to just really emphasize that Dartmouth wants to be an inclusive and welcoming environment that speaks to all comers. And what it mean, what I mean by that is no matter the world you're coming from, no matter uh, your personality or what makes you tick, they want you to feel like you have a prompt that you feel comfortable responding to so that they can learn more about what you think is important for you to share. So don't feel pressure here. This is an amazing opportunity to share more of yourself than has yet been possible in the previous responses and also in the Common App essay response and on your resume and elsewhere. Uh, so here are the options. You have, again, six options, lettered A through F. Option A, B, and C are all recycled from last year. One of those, A, is what excites you. That's very direct. Uh, Option B is labor leader and civil rights activist Dolores Huerta recommended a life of purpose. Quote, we must use our lives to make the world a better place to live, not just to acquire things, end quote, she said. Quote, that is what we were put on earth to do, end quote. In what ways do you hope to make or are you already making an impact? Why? How? And then C is Dr. Seuss of Dartmouth's class of 1925 wrote, think and wonder, wonder and think, as you wonder and think what's on your mind. Uh, and then the new options for this year are D, E, and F. D is celebrate your nerdy side, and that's just it. 
celebrate your nerdy side. And that's very open-ended. Uh, e is, quote, it's not easy being green, end quote. Oh, this, this is one after my heart because I love Kermit the Frog. This was the frequent refrain of Kermit the Frog. How has difference been a part of your life? And how have you embraced it as a part of your identity and outlook? Uh, that's a fascinating new little essay that you can respond to. And then finally, F, as noted in the college's mission statement, quote, Dartmouth educates the most promising students and prepares them for a lifetime of learning and of responsible leadership, end quote. Promise and potential are important aspects of the assessment of any college application, but they can be elusive qualities to capture. Highlight your potential and promise for us. What would you like us to know about you? So that's basically Dartmouth's Hail Mary, Hail, Mary, Hail Mary saying basically, you know what? If, we, if you feel like we have not given you the best opportunity to show us how you are capable of blossoming into an awesome future student and therefore future member of our alumni community, here is your chance. But ultimately, regardless of which of the A through F prompts you choose to respond to for your third and final Dartmouth supplemental essay, your job with any of them is to make sure that you share new content about yourself and ideally content about yourself that will put you as a starring character actually engaging in one or more opportunities at Dartmouth. You may say, Craig, well, on prompt number one, which is required, I already had to say why I want to go to Dartmouth, and that is correct. And you also advised me, Craig, to uh, to show me actually talking to a professor or working with a program or taking part in a place-based opportunity that only exists at Dartmouth. Wouldn't I just be repeating myself here if I start painting a picture of myself with words of me at Dartmouth? And the answer is no. You can do a lot of things at Dartmouth, and only 100 words of those could be included in the first prompt. In this particular prompt, the whole focus of, the pro of your response should not be painting a picture of you further engaging at Dartmouth, but you sure as heck better believe that it would behoove you to at least throw a sentence or three or four in there where you can sh allude to the fact that at Dartmouth, I will be able to pursue what excites me if you choose prompt number A. Or at Dartmouth, you will show how you will continue to celebrate your nerdy side, not just in the past, but in the future. And it's not easy being green. Oh my goodness, how has difference been a part of your life? You can and should show that and how you've embraced it as a part of your identity and outlook, but you sure as heck better believe that you should throw one to four sentences in there about how you anticipate continuing to be able to harness the power of difference as an undergraduate at Dartmouth. If you do the Dr. Seuss one, what makes you wonder and think what's on your mind? Uh, that particular one, again, you you can use that beautifully to dovetail into how you would continue to pursue knowledge specifically at Dartmouth, either in the classroom or, or in the dorms or in the community. Uh, same thing with the Dolores Herta one. Uh, you know, in what ways do you hope to make or are you already making an impact? Of course, you should ground that in pre-existing passions or a pre-existing interest uh, and or goal that you have. But now you have an opportunity to paint a picture of how you want to make an impact at Dartmouth and or how Dartmouth is going to help you prepare to make a Dartmouth on the world beyond Dartmouth once you graduate. But again, Dartmouth is a supporting character in all of your responses to prompt number three, whichever of A through F you choose. Uh, and then finally, of course, with the, the mission one, the option F, uh, highlight your potential and promise for us. You sure as heck better believe that mentioning Dartmouth in at least a sentence or two in that one is important because that could be your closing argument to say, I believe that Dartmouth is an essential stop on my journey to achieving what I believe my future potential and promise really, really is or are. So, um, so Get it? Do you get it? Do you understand what I'm trying to get get into your mind, which is basically use the third response on the Dartmouth supplement for the 2023-2024 admission cycle if you are applying to become a member of Dartmouth's class of 2028 as an undergraduate. You should definitely use that third response to thread the needle between sharing more about yourself, but also sharing more about what you know Dartmouth to be 
and how this is a marriage made in heaven so that they get a very distinct sense by the time they're finished reading this third and final response on your supplement that, again, you are meant for Dartmouth and Dartmouth is meant for you. I will just give one more plug that I did not, I don't believe mention in last year's video, but I will mention in this year's video. If you were invited to interview with Dartmouth, say yes. Don't skip the op opportunity to interview. Uh, whether it's uh, virtual or in person with a member of the alumni community of Dartmouth, definitely jump at the opportunity if an opportunity is given to you to interview for Dartmouth uh, uh, as a part of your application process once you apply. That could be another opportunity for you to further differentiate yourself and impress someone affiliated with Dartmouth, and that information could then be funneled back to the admissions committee, which could very well potentially give your application a little extra boost which could be just what it needs to help you seal the deal at Dartmouth. Again, if you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one throughout all elements of your college application to pro uh, process to Dartmouth or anywhere else you may be applying as a high school senior, I encourage you and or your parents to contact me. My website is collegemeister.com. Otherwise, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. I try to produce these videos whenever I have a spare moment. And in the month of July, which is where we find ourselves right now, I have a lot of spare moments, but I usually start going dark in August because that's when I'm working most intensely with my senior applicants from August all the way through December. That's my busy season, as it were. Uh, so I've been able to produce a number of videos this July, but I won't be probably able to produce as many videos August through December of 2023 as I have for the last few weeks, but I'll try my very best because I know I have a loyal core following. Until next time, my name is Craig Meister, the College Meister. Stay safe and stay well. And again, I wish you the very best of luck on your application for admission to the esteemed liberal arts Ivy League institution that is Dartmouth College.